What's going on, folks? It is K Spade the Prospect. I am back today with a brand new NCAA Football Miami Hurricanes Dynasty video. In today's video, my Miami Hurricanes travel to Atlanta, Georgia to do battle against the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, the undefeated conference opponent that we love to come beat up on. They are known for running the football, running this triple option, and we known for shutting it down. I'll meet you guys on the field. Impact player to keep an eye on in today's game is none other than the Gus Bus himself, Gus Edwards, who has stepped up his level of play huge for this Miami offense. That's you know playing kind of beat up, bruised, and battered. We are missing our starting running back Joseph Yearby, as well as our number one wide receiver, our highest rated wide receiver Braxton Barrio. Now I can't really play the injury card because you guys saw the Yellow Jackets are also playing a little bruised and battered. They are missing their starting QB. So I can't play that injury card, but at the same time, I don't really have to. Gus is a starter, basically. We got two running backs that's capable of being starters, and Gus just fit right into the role. We have also requested a lot of our wide receiver group to step up, you know, to replace Braxton Berrios. Stacey Coley has come out, played phenomenal, and of course, Stan Dobart has done a lot for us. Our first drive would not get us seven points. However, we didn't leave without scoring anything. We was able to convert a three-point field goal. It's a 3-0 Miami game. This is our first look at the high-powered, number one rushing offense in the nation, and they come out passing the football. This is not what I was expecting to see. We didn't really expect these guys to pass, and it looked like they wasn't really about that life anyway. They get off the field without getting any points. They put Miami offense back on the field. Now, Brad Kaya has pretty much been one of the most phenomenal passes of the year. The only reason why you're not hearing his name in the Heisman talks is interception. He would come out and gash the team up, but throw an interception every single game. And so far, the only game that he hasn't thrown an interception in was the big win against Florida State, where we really went run heavy. We didn't throw a lot of passes. Anyway, I talked over the fact that Georgia Tech offense is back on the field. They look pretty good. They're across the 50-yard line. They're doing a perfect job of missing that read option with some quick passes and some, you know, passes that look like they're going to be read options. Nice pitch right here. Beautiful run by the halfback. That stiff arm got him another three or four yards, and he's going to end up getting about 11 yards on the carry right there. So this is what this team does. We expected that. I got my guys ready for it. I already told them the game plan. We're going to hit this quarterback every play. Whether he got the football or not, we're going to hit this quarterback, and we're going to hit him hard. If we get a flag, don't you even worry about the flag. I'll take care of it. Jermaine Grace, last year's linebacker of the year, returning this year, still making plays off of the deflection. He kept his eyes on the pigskin. He comes up with an INT. Kane's offense takes over on the one. Of course, you want to start up the Gus bus. Beautiful. You get it to Gus Edwards, he gets you 10 easy. And we keep the drive alive. We got a tight end in motion right here. They're going to hand it off to Gus again. Starts outside, cuts back inside. He's going to pick up 9 or 10 on that play right there. So if he can keep picking up 5 or better a play, I really feel like Tech's in trouble. Right here, this is a play nobody really expects. Brad Kaya not known for being mobile. Everybody was covered downfield. He just decided to take off with it. Picks up a pretty good yardage, and the drive continues. We're here in the second quarter, man. We have yet to really see any offensive threat from Georgia Tech. Defensively, though, these guys are playing pretty good. You got to give it to them. Another kid that has stepped up big with the injury of Joseph Yearby is Jarvis Williams, the transfer from somewhere in South Georgia, some small college we've never even heard of. But this kid is getting in the game here and there. He is actually impressing the coaching staff. We're going to have to look more into this guy. The dude got a pretty bright future. In fact, a couple of plays later, Jarvis Williams gets into the end zone. It was a very narrow little hole through the offensive line. He attacked the hole, got into the end zone. 10-0 Miami. Let's go. I thought this was going to be a game. These boys about to get scrubbed up. 
about two and a half minutes. At this point, two minutes before the half. Georgia Tech trying to put a drive together. This backup QB who got thrown into the starting role because of an injury looks like he started to settle down. Maybe started the game off a little too, you know, anxiety feel, making some crazy plays and some bad reads, but the kid has settled down. He looked like he's getting it together right here. He's dropping back on second and four, looking to pass, surveying the field, throws a beautiful pass across the middle of the field. That's another first down for Tech. Okay, the Rambling Rex starting to actually get somewhere. I see y'all. Campbell dropping back to pass again. Throwing back across the field, got a wide open receiver that just stepped a foot out of bounds. That could have easily been seven points. They come back with less than a minute to go. They go back, read option. Campbell's going to keep it. Dashing and slashing through the Miami defense. He gets into the end zone for his first score today. Georgia Tech answers. They are finally on the board. 10-7. It is less than a minute to go before the half. Kaya is passing, hoping to get more points but for the half. This is the Brad Kaya that, you know, I have turned him into. I'm so sorry, Brad. We throw an INT. A pretty nice return from GT. You got those guys inside the red zone with 10 seconds to go. They score again. So you go from 10-0 to 14-10 Georgia Tech just like that. It is seven seconds on the clock, though. Brad Kaya comes out, throws a bomb down the field. Stacy Coley beats his man. Big time catch. It's one second on the clock. You look over to the sideline, you get a chance to see Mark Rick's going to get a timeout. Going to send the field goal unit on. The field goal is through the uprights. So we go into the half. 14-13 Georgia Tech. So it's a very competitive game. It's just a, it's a tragedy that they were able to get 14 points. Like that, all right? Third quarter action, man. Georgia Tech gets the ball first. They come out doing what they do. They running that read option, and so far they're having a little bit of success with it. Beautiful. Third and short, they're going to need to convert here. Quarterback's going to keep it and pitch at the last minute. Corn Elder and another Kane player over there bringing that running back down before he gets back to the line of scrimmage. They have to punt. Kane's offense back on the field. Brad Kaya. Now he looks like he's dialed in. It takes an INT before Kaya gets it. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. Stan Dobar, who's been a huge part of the Miami offense this year, continuing to just be a, a big mismatch on backers. Like, backers cannot stop this guy. Case in point right here, Stan Dobar almost caught around the three or two yard line. He gives a little jump just to get himself an extra step or two. He gets into the end zone right here. It's all about the U, man. It is, it's all about the U, for real. The Canes would go for two right here. They would convert the two-point conversion to go up seven points. 21-14 Miami. Georgia Tech running that football, man, and it's working. I want to say that that read option is overhyped, overrated, but it is working. Can't even lie. Third and short right here. Quarterback is going to keep it. He's got a lane. He gets about five up the gut before he is finally brought down. Later in that drive, folks, it is second and about five. Read option again. This time to the weak side of the field. Campbell's going to keep it. Breaking some tackles. Falling forward with a 15-yard pickup. This kid, keep in mind, he is the backup. This man looked like once it's really his time to shine, he's going to be ready for the bright lights, folks. He takes the pass to the end zone, though. That should have been picked off. Artie Burns kind of got in the way of Carter right there. I believe that was Carter's pick, if I don't say so myself. Tech is going to settle for three. Miami offense back on the field here in the third quarter. And now Brad Kaye is kind of surgically chopping up this Georgia Tech secondary. Beating on them. Third and eight, man. They go to Stacey Coley, who makes the point to get the toes down. Stacey's trying to get two toes down. He wants the NFL scouts to know he's ready for prime time. The pressure gets to Kaye on third down. I think they had Stando too, man. I think they had him. Actually, that was second down. It's third down now. They're going to go no huddle. They're going to get the guys back to the line. I saw Stan Dobart. Apparently, Brad Kaya saw him as well. They're going to come back. No huddle. This time, he gets the pass off to Stan Dobart, who is tackled, but it's inside the five-yard line. And you already know, you cannot stop these Kings running backs in a five-yard situation. It might take two. It might take three carries, but they're going to get those five. 28-17, we're here in the fourth quarter. Tech still trying to run the read option. It might be time to put the ball in the air, y'all. Like, I know y'all got a good running attack, but it is time to put the ball in the air. They still running read option when Jermaine Grace cracks Christian Campbell. That's what I'm talking about. That right there. Hit that QB, y'all. Hit him, whether he got the ball or not. Hit him. That's how you stop the option. Georgia Tech punts it off. 
Look at the Gus Bus out here running fools over, man. Miami gets it back. They're going to run the football. They're going to eat some clock. I think it's safe to say they're going to get out of here with a dub. Second and short. Gus Edwards. Even though he goes down right here, he is still falling forward, keeping those feet moving. That's a four-yard gain right there. We are under the two-minute mark, and the Canes are still marching. Gus is still running the football hard, and he runs so physical that late in the game, the defense is tired. They beat up. They don't even want to tackle this guy. He dishes out so much punishment. They don't want to tackle this guy. Look at him right here. The stiff arm, breaking tackles, an 18-yard pickup to get him inside the five. And, of course, he's tired. So Jarvis Williams gets in the game. Two-yard carry into the end zone. Folks, it's 35-17. to Draw the curtains on these boys. Miami come out here and take care of work. I can't wait to see where we're going to be ranked next week. Even though I got to say this, the interception from Brad Kaya was bad. They was able to convert on that. But other than that, Brad Kaya played a phenomenal game. He got a great game from Gus Edwards. And the Miami defense really did a good job of containing the trickeration that is the Georgia Tech Paul Johnson offense. Anyway, folks, that is all I got for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, show your love by banging the like button. If you are new here, I encourage you to subscribe and join the Wolfpack, man. That is what I call my supporters. To me, they truly are the best supporters on the tube, and I want you to be one, too. I'm out in the next time, folks. Peace.